Thank you very much. Come and crew that seats for takeoff, please. Today we're off to a place that nearly everyone knows, but most people don't realise it really exists. sits in the centre of Italy, but how did it become the name of a book? I will let my friend Giuseppe explain what he learnt when he met Walter Hooper, the biographer and former personal secretary to C.S. Lewis. Walter Hooper asked to directly to um, uh, C.S. Lewis why he chose the name Narnia, no? And uh, the replay of C.S. Lewis is, uh, it was, please open my wardrobe. <laughs> and uh, the real wardrobe that is in the room of C.S. Lewis, and uh, he takes an atlas. In this atlas, there are a, a map of Italy. Uh, in this case, he put also a circle around the Narni city, and so, C.S. Lewis know very well that uh, Narni is an Italian city that are named Narnia in the old time. And so the connection is uh, perfect. There is n now there is no more problem. Narni is Narnia. <laughs> Narni, or Narnia as the Romans renamed it, is an ancient hill town in Umbria. It sits at an altitude of 240 metres above a bend in the river Neira and has around 20,000 people living there. In 300 BC the Romans conquered it as it was a key point on the route the Flaminian Way, a road between Rome and the Adriatic Sea. Here the, the Roman people uh, is very important for us because the Roman people uh, look to Narnia like a place in, we, in which it is very easy to defend Rome because all the people that came from the north and uh, arrive in our land, in Narnia land, uh, must go through a, a gorge no? uh, in which the, uh, they must uh, came down the hill of Narnia. And so a few people, military, that stay in Narnia can kill a lot of people that go through the valley and, and near the river. And so it's very a strategic point. And so um, Roman people like to put here the best military that they have for um, defend Rome. As the road to Rome had to cross the river Nera, the Romans built a huge bridge, the Pont de Augusto. The bridge was 160 metres long and had four spans each 30 metres high. It was built with large blocks of white marble, neatly squared and fitted together, but without the appearance of cement having been used. Over the years the bridge has collapsed, leaving just one span. But even this has suffered damage from recent earthquakes. This bridge is very important because it is in the Flaminia road, and so the people must go for cross the uh, river Nar, Nera, and uh, you, when, you, when I see the Roman bridge, I always uh, see uh, the Roman people that uh, uh, walk uh, up and uh, cross uh, the river, and uh, um, with the horses, uh, with the elephants maybe. 150 years before the building of the bridge, the Romans constructed the beautiful Marmor Falls. They link the river Valino to the river Neira, 165 metres below, and they are the tallest man-made waterfall in the world. The Romans built these falls because the river Valino in Roman times fed the wetland of the Rieti Valley. The wetland was thought to bring illness, probably malaria. To remove this threat, in 271 BC, the Roman consul ordered the construction of a canal 
to divert the stagnant waters into the natural cliff at Marmor. From there, the water fell into the narrow river below, creating the falls. There are many other reminders of Roman times in and around Narni, including this stone lion, which can be found in the museum. This lion is fantastic because uh, it's a Roman lion, really. And so it has about uh, 2,000 years. But we found it only the time in which uh, here there is a work no, for do a new road. And so when there came uh, uh, the big uh, card uh, to do this work, uh, no? uh, they found uh, this stone and it's very close to the uh, river. And the place is in which the, we found this uh, is very close to the river and uh, in the beautiful uh, uh, water uh, with uh, <laughs> the special color that uh, you know. And so this lion is like uh, our uh, Aslan in the Chronicle of Narnia. Towards the end of the 5th century, after the fall of the Roman Empire, Narnia was conquered again, this time by the Goths and later the Byzantines. In the 11th and 12th century, Narnia began to increase in wealth and power. And it was during this period that most of the important churches were built and amongst these was the magnificent cathedral of San Giovanni. In the cathedral lays the body of Blessed Lucia of Narni. Lucia was born in this house here in Narni and was famed as a mystic. At the age of five she had the vision of the Virgin Mary with child Jesus. When Lucia was twenty she received the stigmata the Sacred Wounds of Christ. Lucia died on the 15th of November, 1544, and in 1710 was beatified. Saint Lucia, although bearing the same name as the little girl in the Chronicles of Narnia, was not the reason C.S. Lewis chose that name. But maybe, just maybe, she was part of the inspiration, for he would have known about her. Also in the 11th century, St. Francis of Assisi was invited to Narni to perform some miracles. He lived in Narni for a short time, and in gratitude for what he had done, the people of Narni built the church of San Francesco on the site where he had lived. One of the oldest churches in Narni is San Maria in Pensoli. This church was built over what is thought to be the 8th century Roman temple dedicated to Bacchus, the god of wine and agriculture. There are many other churches in Narni and they are a rich source of art and history. In 1979, a part of history was discovered by six cavers who loved exploring and mapping the underground world. One day, one of them, Roberto Nini, was shown a hole in an overground corner of an allotment. Roberto and his friends decided to investigate by entering the hole, and to their amazement, they found a large room piled with rubble. This turned out to be the 12th century chapel the Church of San Angelo. But the story did not end there, for as they over time excavated deeper, they came across a tale of torture, murder and papal inquisition. They discovered torture chambers and a prison cell covered with graffiti carved into the walls by the people who were imprisoned there. These rooms were used right up to 1759 when Giuseppe Andrea Lombardini an Inquisition guard who was imprisoned for heresy, left his marks on the wall.
The town of Narni has little changed since medieval times. Many of the buildings have stood unchanged for centuries. If you enter the city of our Porta Tanana, built in 1486 to strengthen the defences of Narni, you soon come across the Piazza Garibaldi which faces the cathedral. In the centre of the piazza is a bronze fountain standing on the site of a great subterranean system fed by the Roman aqueduct. There is a second fountain in the Piazza dei Priori. This fountain faces the 13th century town hall on one side of the street and the Priori Palace on the other. On the town hall there are various medieval carvings, including the symbol of Narni, the griffin. On the palace opposite is a small lodge, where public notices were read out. At the north end of Narni is the University of Perugia, famous for its Faculty of Investigation Science. Here we have also, um, about uh, 2,000 students that study for the safety in the world. And so we have a lot of young people that live here. At the south end of Narni, standing 332 metres above sea level, is the Rocca. This fortress overlooks the whole of Narni and was built for Cardinal Alborno, one of the most important figures in the early Middle Age history of Umbria. Uh, the Rocca is a strange uh, place because uh, you can see the Rocca uh, when you arrive uh, very far from Narnia and is in the, on the top of the Narnia city. And, uh, but uh, this place is a strange place. It looks like uh, the uh, wild witch uh, in the film of The Chronicle of Narnia. The rock uh, have uh, two kind of uh, uh, instrumental uh, thing. The first is uh, uh, that is a place uh, for military that uh, came from uh, Rome and uh, can defend the uh, land of the Pope. The other, the castle, can be a place in which when the Pope go uh, in uh, travel, no can stay, and many Pope stay in the Narnia castle. In 1527, 20,000 soldiers returning from sacking Rome tried to capture the Rocca, and although they failed, they badly damaged it. At the beginning of the 20th century, a Russian prince bought it and kept it until 1972. It is now owned by the Municipal Heritage. During its history, the Rocca has not only hosted the military, but also cardinals, popes and emperors. And the bedroom that was used by the Pope has in its corner a wardrobe. I wonder if this is the way back from this magical place called Narnia.